I'm Christine Yee, and we're keeping things health-oriented. We're about to talk to some amazing finalists whose projects might be future solutions for the treatment, diagnosis, and detection of cancer and other chronic diseases. Let's start with Elaine. Elaine, tell us about your research on taste loss and chemotherapy. What did you learn, and what does it mean for taste loss that comes from other sources? My project focused on taste regeneration as it relates to stem cell activity because stem cells are what allow us to regenerate our taste receptor cells, which allow us to enjoy all our favorite foods. Through my research, I was able to find that there are two candidate microenvironments for stem cells in the tongue. And furthermore, by disrupting these microenvironments through things like chemotherapy, I was able to find a sharp decrease in proliferation regardless of location. These results are important because they allow us to take one step closer to finding solutions for taste loss associated with chemotherapy, COVID-19, aging, and beyond. Awesome, thank you so much. Next up, Ellen. Kawasaki disease is the number one cause of acquired heart disease in children, yet it is commonly misdiagnosed and does not currently have a diagnostic test. How might your research make diagnosis easier? In my project, I investigated a deep learning based early screening tool for Kawasaki disease, which uses photographs just like ordinary photographs you might take on a smartphone. This means that my algorithm can be implemented in a web app for patients where patients anywhere around the world can upload an image of a Kawasaki disease clinical feature and receive a medical recommendation, uh, which can help aid in early treatment and diagnosis. That's amazing. Now to Ozzy. Ozzy, you combine the properties of two major multiple sclerosis drugs to design a potential new treatment. Can you tell more, us more about your, the treatment you studied and what promise it might hold for patients with MS? Sure. Um, for my combination drugs, I used two well-established drugs for multiple sclerosis. The first one being uh, interleukin-4, which is a neural cytokine, and ibutilaz, which is a phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitor. Um, I found results that I was hoping for, uh, being that the combination treatment was more effective than the two individual treatments. Um, this is very important in the, uh, I guess, in the study of multiple sclerosis. And moving into future, uh, future tests and future uh, experiments, the goal is to get closer, obviously, to a treatment for humans. Um, so what I want to do and what the future should be looking at is to test on higher level organisms other than earthworms and to even look deeper into the mechanisms as to why this combination drug works. Thank you. Wonderful. Diego, you designed an improved cancer drug. Can you tell us more about your inhibitors and how it could work to help improve treatment? Yeah, so for my project, I designed inhibitors of APEBEC3G, which is a human protein linked to cancer evolution and drug resistance. The larger APEBEC3 family is responsible for over 50% of endogenous mutations in human cancer, and those mutations impact over 75% of human cancers. And so inhibiting A3G has a lot of impact in potential treatments for patients who are suffering from some of the negative impacts that it can have. So for my project, I focused on designing a synthetic DNA strand that will bind to A3G in place of the DNA in cancer cells that it wants to bind. And in doing so, allow my inhibitor to attenuate the cytidine deaminase activity that A3G is using to cause these mutations. Through the use of a molecular dynamics computer simulation, I optimized an inhibitor which will undergo future in vitro testing to confirm its viability and advance drug discovery. Amazing. Now over to Jason. Jason, you found that certain mutations can lead to tumor-like growth in under 24 hours. Why does this happen just so fast, and what can doctors do with your findings? Yeah, thanks for the question. So cancer can often be thought of like a car. Um, there are two situations. Either you can have the acceleration that you can't get your foot off of, or you can have it where you can't hit the brakes. So I studied RAS, which is an oncogene that is mutated in 19% of all cancers. And essentially, RAS tells cells to grow. So for my research, what I noticed is that even in 24 hours of constant RAS activation, which is a pretty short time period, cells will continue to grow without stopping. Um, and that kind of explains how quickly these changes can happen. So I think in order for doctors to be able to use this research to benefit patients, one big improvement and change that has to happen is there just has to be better early detection mechanisms um, for these types of potentially lethal mutations. And one day I hope to be able to see that kind of technology. Great, thank you. Mia, you identified a genetic sequence that correlates with better survival rates in childhood cancer neuroblastoma. What does your research mean for future treatments? 
Yeah, so in my study, I identified a long non-coding RNA, which is a master genetic regulator, and found that it was associated with increased survival and the potential mechanisms of tumor disappearance, being the body's natural defense mechanism, as well as programmed cell death. So it is my hope that upon an overexpression of this long non-coding RNA in high-risk tumors, that it may also induce those tumors to potentially regress or disappear. And since I also found that this long non-coding RNA was variably expressed in other cancers, I would like to see whether it could serve as a potential therapeutic target in other cancers as well. Thank you. Kevin, you're up. We know that earlier and easier detection of cancer is key to treating it. Tell us about how your research may help us move in that direction. Sure. So in the last 50 years, global cancer morbidity and mortality rates have rapidly increased, with nearly 30 million annual cancer cases expected by 2040. Given that one of the most effective predictors for cancer survival rate is the stage at which cancer is diagnosed. Now, in order to increase early cancer diagnoses, we need to be able to identify new genetic mutation markers for studying cancer, which will allow us to create new diagnostic tests that are more efficient at detecting early cancer itself. So my study was focused on identifying novel genetic mutation types, specifically repetitive sequences, called recurrent repeat contractions in microchanging short tandem repeats, and characterize them in terms of the potential um, effect on cancer function and efficiency. I found that these uh, mutations actually existed not only in silico, but also in primary tumor samples and potentially even in plasma samples. And so the idea is if you were to walk into a clinic and get your blood drawn, we would be able to potentially determine these mutations in the context of cell-free DNA, allowing for early cancer detection through blood draw. Awesome, thank you so much. And then last but certainly not least, Cindy. Cindy, damage in the retina due to diabetes is the leading cause of blindness in working age adults. What does your research show about early detection and does it have potential to inform treatment? Diabetic retinopathy is traditionally diagnosed once physical changes to the retinal blood vessels become visible. My research showed that only two weeks after diabetes induction, the neurons of the retina were already experiencing changes in cell function through their firing and also cell shape with less dendritic coverage. These results could provide new tools for diagnosis and treatment of the disease, which currently doesn't have treatments that can prevent eventual blindness. Awesome. Thank you so much. Folks, that's a wrap. Once again, I'm Christine Yee, and I really appreciate you joining me and these amazing Science Talent Search finalists today. You can learn more about all 40 of these incredible young scientists at our public exhibitions webpage, which is linked in the Society for Sciences bio. And please tune in on Tuesday night for our exciting top 10 winners announcement. Thank you so much.